and we're live. What is up? What is up? Episode number nine, the Unplugged Alpha back at you again, talking about saving the West. Gotta save the West, man. <laughs> All right. So, cool things happening. Um, ordered a new camera, but um, apparently they don't stock lenses and cameras together. Got this new badass lens. It's a 24 mil 1.4, F1.4, which is supposed to clean up the video because my editor says the reason why my clips channel is so pixelated when they got to zoom in when there's groups is because of the video quality. So hopefully that sorts it out. <clears throat> Too bad the body won't be here for about a month or so, but that's going on. And um, the Cultivate Crypto Mindset course is closing Tuesday at midnight. So I did a cast with the boys. Um, it was Friday or so. Um, so if you go back to the recent videos, it's like a video before this one. If you want to learn more about it, check that out. If you want to get into the course, um, bu -bu -bum, let me drop it here in the chat. But the Yeah, boom. Honestly, guys, if you want to make some money, some proper money, and um, you've been sitting on the sidelines, you know, you got two options, you know, hop into the course or sit on the sidelines. It doesn't matter to me either way. It doesn't, doesn't change my life, but it's going to change your life if you get into it. A lot of guys in my community have made a lot of money doing this. So I'm always going to strongly recommend it. And uh, especially since it's still very, very early on, there's not a lot of um, crypto wallet holders out there still. The vast majority of the populations and hold it. institutions are getting into it now. So they're saying it's supposed to ramp up this fall. And they've got some good coins to talk about. And uh, if you're new, they'll give you all the basics. If you're a little more intermediate or advanced, you'll get all of that too. Um, it's such a dynamic market. It's always changing. But um, yeah, so there's that. Um, let's get into tonight's topic. So I put this out on my uh, Facebook page. Um, I'm just going to pin this up at the top just for a little bit anyway. Um, I put it out on my community page, sorry, not Facebook, on YouTube. And what was the question we put out here? Do men have an obligation to save the West or should we just take care of ourselves? Let's just put it up on the screen here so I can show you guys. Share screen, boom, boom, boom. That's it. And 35% uh, of you said, yes, we must save the West. And 65% said, nope. Let it burn. I'm tired of the BS. So I'm going to approach this from both angles tonight just to kind of um, try to look at it from two different perspectives. And I'll tell you at the end what my perspective is. I know some of you guys already think you know and you may or may not be right, but I'll let you guys know. I'm going to be taking some call-ins tonight. So if you're a guy with some solutions, I want to hear from you. I'm going to drop the join link. You guys can join in on the cast. Hopefully you've got some solutions to this problem because it is a problem. I mean, let's talk about the problem first, but, um, and, um, you know, we can chop it up a little bit live. Um, show's going to run for 90 minutes. It might go a little bit longer tonight because this will, this will probably be a very interesting one and I'm sure we'll get some good call-ins on it. But, um, what do we got here in the chat from, uh, from the early boys? we got a super chat early on. Thank you, Rich, for your work. You're the most, one of the most reasonable voices out there. I'm focused on my journey, but sometimes I'm getting distracted by these weak politicians and the decisions they make. Politics is a big part of it too. So we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, my boy, Infam Infamous Rifle says, they don't deserve to be saved. My intent is to work on myself and improve my own life. That is the only thing I am in control of. The West has become a decadent and needs a reset. I think we can talk about resetting as well. It's an interesting perspective. So this is a great conversation. Um, I often think about this because... You know, when you're on social media, and it comes mostly from like TradCon, Twitter, and social pages, like um, I think Ryan calls it like Miller Lite masculinity, which is like, um, you know, they drink Miller Lite, have a couple of babies, have a, a work shed in the back, uh, grow a beard, and uh, shoot bows and arrows and, and maybe guns, you know, from time to time. And, you know, the notion is uh, get married, put babies in her, and save the West. Okay. That is a approach. It's one approach, but does it save the West? Let's talk about the problem. So 
I think if you're going to go to any one area, because I mean, you can talk about all kinds of different things here. You can talk about economics, schooling, children, you know, the state of masculinity, femininity, um, you know, these, these toxic versions of them and all that sort of stuff. But I think the one leading area that is the clearest to look at when evaluating an empire, because, you know, empires have always existed. We live in an empire today. You know, the West is technically an empire, okay? But Roman Empire is a Greek, Ottoman, so on and so forth. They all came and went, okay? They all became big. They all had reach and influence, and they no longer had it. Cyclical, right? These things happen. That's just the way that it works. Nothing's forever. They're either on the rise or they're on the decline. You're either growing or you're dying. You can't, you can't be in between. I don't see much in the way of improvement right now. Okay. So the problem as it's defined, you know, as I was talking about earlier, the problem is really things are not good. You know, if things were good, people wouldn't be saying, well, let's save the West. You know, the, the Tradcon Twitter guys, the Miller Lite masculinity guys, the, um, there's all these like masculinity groups. I'm, I'm going to do that in quotations for those of you that are listening on, you know, the podcast version of this, but there's all kinds of masculinity groups out there that like to um, sell this narrative, you know, this uh, notion that if you just do the right thing, things will get better, right? And I've said this before, and I wrote about it in my book as well. They tell men and women two totally different things. They tell men, you do what's right. They tell women, you do what's right for you, girl. Okay? Yeah. Rolo's in the chat. Masculinity, LARPers, bingo. So the problem is, and it can be viewed very clearly by looking at people's voting patterns because people cast votes. I know that there's a lot of folks out there that say that uh, the system's rigged, democracy's broken, um, mail-in ballots, blah, 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 and all that sort of stuff. It's not working. And, you know, um, there was <laughs> underhanded things that happen. I'm trying to water this down a little bit for YouTube. You guys know how it goes. But specific to North America, we'll talk about Canada and the US. I'm not super familiar with British um, politics um, as I was in the past, but Western countries primarily consist of, you know, English speaking, modern, you know, there's a lot of European countries that are also very modern and Western as well. They would be inclusive, you know, uh, guys like Macron, you know, in France. Um, there's all kinds of um, these Western leaders that people are voting for, which are not contributing to the ascent, to the betterment of society. And all you got to do is take a look at the state of things, right? Um, what do we got going on here? Trying to catch up on a few of these. Dude is Desi. Hey, Rich, uh, Shai, Shaikh here. I think the West has forgone so much. I don't know a lot, but this will reverse. Well, stay tuned, brother. You're going to find out. Oh, um, sorry. Before I forget, I always try to do this to try to just help with the algorithms. If you guys can do me solid, uh, come over to YouTube. Just click this link if you're watching this, like on uh, Twitter or any of the other platforms. It just helps me a ton. Hit the like button just to give it a thumbs up. Oh, that's the wrong one. Did I hit the wrong one? I hit the wrong one. Sorry. That's the Cultivate Crypto one for the this one here. Boom. Boom. That's it. Click that one if you're watching somewhere else. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> and when you get there, hit that like button. Helps me out. Got 200 likes, 500 change people watching. Hit that like button. Get those likes up. <clears throat> so what's the problem? It's messed up out there. It's, you know, it's a problem because everybody's trying to solve it. And there's two camps. It's let's fix this. Let's mind our own business and, and fix ourselves. And they both think they're right. It, you know, if you wanted to distill it down to the two camps, the let's fix it crowd, again, it's the uh, Miller like masculinity guys. It's just, you know, wife up, wife her up, put a bunch of babies in her and we're going to save things. But the environmental conditions that we're living in, because you don't have autonomy anymore as a guy, you know, you're no longer the head of your household. I talk about that in my book in several chapters, the unplugged alpha, you can get it on Amazon as the title of the podcast suggests. <clears throat> the state is the head of the household. And for a very, very long time, men ruled their world. They, you know, they were the king of their castles. That's, that doesn't exist anymore. The state runs things. And 
it's gotten itself to a place that varies depending on where you're living, state or province, you know, in North America, for example, I know that's where most of the views come from. Depending on where you're living, um, there's different things that have been happening that have contributed to the decline that the Miller Lite masculinity guys are trying to save. I'll give you a great example. One of the things that drives me nuts, you know, lately is um, I recently learned that a 12 year old kid, well, a 12 year old kid, let's put it this way they can't drive a car, they can't vote, they can't drink alcohol, they can't buy weed, they can't do any of those things that are technically available to 16, 19, and older, um, you know, kids or as they turn into adults. But at 12 years old, they can make their own medical decisions, believe it or not, here in Ontario. So the way that the government seems to be leveraging this position is with this whole let's get everybody jabbed narrative because it's better for us. We'll deal with the sides of whether it is or it isn't some other time. But, you know, the government wants to impose their beliefs on you, on your household, on your children. You don't have governess over your own children anymore now. They're going to be putting vaccination clinics in school this fall, I believe. I've seen the writing on the wall. They haven't announced it yet, but this is where I think it's going. Which means that they're going to be luring 12-year-old and up, because if you're 12 or older, they can make medical decisions on their own like this. They're going to be luring 12-year-old kids to come and get jabbed because all the cool kids are doing it. Okay? That's a problem. The whole, like the whole selling point of having children is that your name, your DNA, your beliefs, your values can be imposed on your offspring and passed down into perpetuity. Now the government's saying, sorry, Mr. Cooper, we're going to make that decision for you. And we've decided that we think it's better that we do this. And we're going to pass a law that says that 12 year olds can make these choices. And then we're now going to uh, offer them lollipops and candy and stuff like that, which is probably, you know, how they're going to roll with it. It's insane. It's insane. And I keep seeing versions of this time and time and time and time again. There was another um, news piece I saw in the last 14 days. There was a parent, I think it was a mom in Chicago, that a judge decided, unilaterally decided, that she was not a fit parent because she did not take the vaccine. And I'm not sure if she lost custody or had reduced custody or if it went into protective services, the child itself, but that's how things roll now. How can you save the West? And I'm asking this question legitimately. How can you save the West if you don't have control of, over your offspring? Starting with that alone, you know, your kids, because this is what the state seems to be doing. I'm going to put a poll up here as I'm, as I'm talking, right? Uh, can men save the West and it's just a yes or no answer I'm not gonna leave it up for too too long so it's those of you that are watching this live Rolo says you can't say solve new order problems with old order thinking Jimbo's on there years ago I was in the save it camp but the red pill changed my mindset and I don't think that that's a doomer approach to it if I can be honest right it's not like you know, you unplug, you see the code in a matrix and you understand things for what they are. You've read my book, you've read Rolo's books, any of the other stuff that I've recommended. It's not like you unplug and it's like, oh, that's it, it's over. There's still the mental point of origin component of it, which I'm going to be talking about as well, right? Because you do have control over your life. But how do you save the West when you don't have control or influence and people don't seem to want it saved? So let's deal with that part. People don't seem to want it safe because I think that's an important component of it. If you watch people's voting patterns based on what candidates stand for, and here, let me pull up the, the recent polls in Canada so we can see where we're at here because we have an election going on right now. So this is this is very timely. Uh, Canadian polls, let's see where we're at. Where are we tracking? Yeah, this is the most recent one that I saw, I think, here. Poll in Canada, boom. Okay, share. Uh, do, do, add the screen. Hope you guys can see that. <clears throat> so um, I'm just going to break these down to describe it for you because we have a, a few more political parties than you guys do in the yes and the U.S. that get tracked in the polls. Uh, LPC is a liberal party. 
CPC is the conservative party. Can we make this bigger? There we go. CPC is a conservative party. NDP is essentially a socialist party. GPC is the Green Party. Global warming, you know, it's save the baby seals. The Bloc Québécois is a separatist party. They basically want to have Quebec separate from the rest of Canada. And the People's Party of Canada, the PPC, is Max Bernier's party, which is more of a libertarian, freedom-based party. So before you go around thinking that you're going to save the West by drinking your Miller Lite, growing a beard, and living in a shed in your backyard, and putting babies in your wife, you've got to understand, how does, the, how does your nation vote? What does your nation think of the direction of politics? What, is your, what does your nation cast a vote for? What is it that they view as the best choice, the best direction, because all of these people collectively get to decide the direction that things go. And the government's quite clever at this, right? Long time ago, they were small government. You could only cast a vote if you had property rights. So if you're a property owner, you know, you cast a vote. Women weren't able to vote until, you know, very recently. Democracy has been around for a while. The Greeks invented it a long, long time ago. They used to do it with stones. <laughs> There'd be like a white stone and a black stone and you'd take your stone, you'd put it in a basket and they'd you know, count the stones afterwards, you know, sort of thing. That's how they did the polling, you know, for the electoral stuff. Concept's been around for a long, long time. Ancient Greece has had it for a while, right? So now it's involved, you know, evolved into a situation where government has realized, well, if we have people with no skin in the game voting for policies that benefit them, that they don't contribute to, and I'm, and I'm saying this, you know, blanketly, you know, in a balance of probabilities, you've got to understand this. Then this is what then this is where we end up with. And after decades and decades of all this stuff, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to some of these super chats in a second. Just stand by, guys. And after decades and decades of all this stuff, this is where we've ended up, where people have voted like Justin Trudeau has won the last two Canadian elections. And I'm sure you're familiar with him because I know a lot of people don't like him, and I know a lot of people seem to like him. There's enough people that like him that he is still the Prime Minister of Canada and could potentially win this election. Will he? I don't know. We'll see. But people are voting for his policies. What do his policies include? Inclusiveness, wokeness, inclusiveness, rainbows, inclusiveness, high taxes, um, ultra-rich uh, taxes. You know, let's 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 bend over the guys that are doing the work and creating jobs and employing people and tax them more. And more social programs, more social programs, more free stuff, more social programs, more wokeness, more political correctness, more censorship, more control, more lockdowns, more jabs, more passports. That's what this, that's what this party stands for. The only party on the other side of the equation that contributes to saving the West, which nobody seems to vote for, okay, we don't need more social programs. We don't need more government. Government's important. It needs to provide the function of maintaining the roads, fire services, policing, national defense, stuff like that. You could argue about healthcare and other things kind of in between, but it's gotten to the point where it's overreached beyond that. It's actually gotten to the point now where they're going to do things that are going to potentially conflict with your own belief system with your own 12-year-old children. You have a 12-year-old kid in school, and they want to jab them. What are you going to do? You're going to take them out of the school system. You can homeschool them. Sure, that's one option. But when are they going to get them? Are they going to get them when they're 15 or 16? When they're 18? You know, it's difficult to say, right? But the polling uh, and what people vote for, I think, is important. And it's not that much different in the United States. You know, I mean, individual states are better. I have a lot of friends in many of the different states. They're very close friends of mine. I know exactly what's going on in their lives and what they think of all of this stuff too. But it's very, very similar in the United States. I mean, overall, from a national perspective, you've got Joe Biden as president. What does he stand for? Pretty much the same thing <laughs> as Justin Trudeau. Big taxes, wokeness, political correctness, da -da 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 -da, you know, the same sort of stuff that I just ticked off. How is it that much different? Is it much different? But that's what people are casting their vote for. And that's and, and the governance part of things is what you have to look at. How do you change the governance part of things when only 4% of people in Canada right now, and I'm, and I'm you know, moving my cursor over the PPC one, which has 4% in, in the polls, for those of you that are listening and not watching, 
only 4% of the population is, is basically saying, yeah, we need more freedom, smaller government, lower taxes, you know, basically get out of my life government, right? That's, that's generally the angle that, that you want is you want more mobility, you want more freedom, and you don't want the government imposing beliefs on you that you don't necessarily agree with. You don't even have exemptions here in Canada right now because of um, religious beliefs, um, dietary restrictions. The only two exemptions right now that you have where I live, if you don't want to take the jab or participate in the vaccine passport, is you have to have a proven allergy, okay? And you just can't say, you know, I have an allergy. You actually have to say, I have an allergy. And then it has to be proven by whatever technician, te you know, tests you for that allergy. And then you have, a, have to produce another piece of paper to circumvent the other piece of paper that forces you to get the vaccine. So there's that. <clears throat> and the other option is you took the first jab and you had a bad reaction to it. And again, you have to have a medical professional write you a letter saying that in their opinion, it wouldn't be wise for you to continue taking these jabs because it wouldn't, you know, serve your health. That's it. That's it. it uh, there's a lot of arguments up, out there whether or not it's a violation of charter rights, the Nuremberg Code, blah, 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 and all that sort of stuff. But that's where you're at, right? So for those of you that want to come at this with a solution, because I, again, like I, I am inviting people constantly on my show. If you disagree with something that I say, Come at me with a solution. What is what is your better solution? I have not heard anybody attempt to approach this from a different angle yet. Let me catch up on these super chats so they don't disappear up here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Andrews Travel says vaccine is deadly. One of the worlds, one world reset. Okay, I'll talk about the reset in a second because I because I keep hearing reset, reset, reset. Stand by. Until they get rid of the sources that invite hypergamy, men can't save them. Okay, I'm going to deal with this for a second. So, social media has ruined dating. So Ryan's saying until they get rid of the sources that invite hypergamy, you want to remove social media, screens, cell phones, technology, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cell phone towers. Let's say you get rid of all that stuff. Do you think women are going to stop being hypergamous? Do you think women are going to stop considering better options if you remove cell phones? Do you think women are going to stop considering a better option if TikTok and Instagram just blow up and disappear overnight? That's in women's nature. It is a survival mechanism. Read some evolutionary psychology, okay? I've got pinned books. I've got a, a pinned comment in the top of all my videos. Not a lot of you guys pay attention to this because it's like you watch the video or sometimes you watch, you know, you see the title and then you're in the comments right away writing a response and you even watch the damn fucking video. <clears throat> Pin in the top comment, there's a list of useful links. One of them is an Amazon link to books that I recommend guys read. And in there, there's some stuff with evolutionary psychology. Most of you guys out there running mouth on things like hypergamy don't understand what you're talking about. It's innate to their survival. If women weren't hypergamous, we would not have the society that we have today. If your grandmothers, your great grandmothers, and all the way down the chain 10,000 years ago were not hypergamous, we would not be here today. Do you guys understand that? It's part of, it's, it's, it's a feature. It's not a bug. Okay. Removing social media or platforms or only fans is not going to make it go away. It's just going to give her less access to the attention. That's the only difference. Do, do, do. Um, Rich, have you seen Hacking Democracy? It's a must watch. Haven't seen it. Uh, let me know where it's at. If it's like Netflix, Amazon, let me know. Decentralization is a way to go. Yeah, uh, decentralization solves a lot of the problems when it comes to the financial system, which is another broken component of society that. I don't see fix like there's no way the government is going to fix money problems. Inflationary issues are huge. There's inherent problems with all fiat currencies and the centralized nature of it just like it's just a matter of time before we move off fiat currency. Is it going to be on the blockchain? That's where I would place my bets, which is why I'm so bullish on things like, you know, Charlie and Miguel teaching people how to acquire cryptocurrency and why it's important. Haters don't like it. Hey, if you hate me for saying that, then buy and hold the U.S. dollar. Robert Kiyosaki was on with Rolo the other week, and that was one of the things that like leapt off the screen at me. 
If you if you trust the government so much, and if you think that's the way to go, keep buying and holding U.S. dollars. Okay. Um, I live in California, and currently we have a recall election going on. It would be, it would, I would love to see given nuisance uh, for gap gone. Okay, but who is who's he going to be replaced by? Because again, uh, add to stream and remove that. This is what people vote for. These are the patterns in North America. We see people voting for socialist and liberalist sort of patterns. Liberalism, you know, Jack Donovan calls it the empire of nothing. He's not wrong. Um, if more people read Thomas so well, then we wouldn't be having these. Yep. See, the thing that you got to understand about humans, unpopular movie opinions, the things that you really got to understand about humans. There's a, a Netflix documentary called uh, How to Be a Tyrant. And um, one of the things that popped off on that one was that throughout history, for a very long period of time, human beings have loved a ruler. Doesn't matter if it's um, a high priest, a king, a queen, a god, whatever it is, humans love being ruled. We always have been. And the other day I was watching one of my sailing videos, you know, as I do, it's pretty much all that I'll spend time watching on YouTube now. And um, they were doing this like tour on the Yucatan, you know, peninsula. And I've been there, I've seen Kobo, I've seen, you know, Chichen Itza and all that sort of stuff. And I've been in the cenotes and swam them all. And they're doing a tour. And it was interesting from the perspective because he was talking about how society at that time and the Mayan civilization was very, very advanced. Um, if you want to learn more about that, Graham Hancock has some great books. If you don't want to read his books, look up Graham Hancock and Joe Rogan interviews. Guy's a freaking genius. The stuff that he's discovered um, about society and ancient civilizations is just stunning. But back to the point of the mind, uh, you know, civilization, they, they rally together to build giant stone structures and pyramids. And they've only been tracking hurricanes for, I think, the last 150 or 200 years, if I'm not mistaken. It hasn't been a long time um, in North America. And there's been a lot of hurricanes that have hit the Yucatan Peninsula, and none of these stone structures have collapsed. They've built them properly, despite what alarmists and global warmness have been saying, like this is all a function of local global warming. All that sort of stuff. They've been going on for millions of years. But the Mayans built these giant, sturdy stone structures around either a king or a high priest, okay, somebody that ruled in that area. People love being ruled, right? People love being ruled, so here we go. Societies come and go, I think. Empires come and go. Egyptians, Greek, Romans, Ottoman, you know, the Mayan, like, they, they all had great ascents, glory, and leave things behind. I don't know what we're gonna leave behind, <laughs> you know, as the West, but you get the idea. Um, you know, reading books informs you. Voting for, you know, a different governor may change things temporarily. But as my old man always, you know, seemed to say, like, the pendulum just swings from one side to the other. It's like boom, 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 boom. Nobody ever kind of like goes and votes for one of these guys over here that run a libertarian party that give you your personal freedom and your autonomy. They just don't. Ask yourself, what are the voting patterns, right? The only way to save the West, stop paying attention to the woke mob, cancel, cable, mainstream media. These people have a small minority yet are the loudest. I can't say for sure how many, like what percentage of the population is woke, cancel cultured, you know, the offspring of the Karens, but there's a lot of them out there. And again, the voting patterns tell you. The voting patterns tell you, they just don't lie, right? I can tell you right now here in Canada, the voting patterns for the woke go for the Liberal Party, the NDP, Jagmeet Singh, who I worked with about 10 years ago when I was lobbying on Bill 55, who lied to my face. These people are who they're voting for, okay? And even the Conservative Party in Canada now has been criticized for being basically blue-red, meaning they're like liberal light, pretty much the same thing. You know, they support a lot of the same policies that Justin Trudeau does, so it's not like you're going to see a big change if you vote for the Conservative Party here. Bum, bum, bum. All right, let's go back here. How are we doing with this poll? What did you guys say? 
Can men save the West? Yes, no. Pretty much the same split. 57% said no. 43% said yes. Close to 500 votes. Uh, schools teach kids. Kids become men. M men do what women want. America's doomed and I'm happily gone. That's one thing that, you know, you see from a lot of guys. And, you know, I've talked about entertaining, you know, an exit as well. And I don't know if it's going to be a permanent exit or, you know, sometime somewhere else in a little bit of time here. You know, one of the things I've learned is your ass doesn't need to be where your assets are. And one of the things that drives me nuts about Canada is the taxation rates are absurd. <clears throat> Let me put it into perspective for you. You work your ass off. You create something. You now pay yourself money. Okay. When I, when I pay myself, you're paying 53% at the top tax rate on your income. Okay, I lose half my income. The government takes it. They put it into programs, most of which I don't agree with. Okay. Then what do they do? Then I take that money that I've been taxed 53% on. Then I go and invest it in something. And I let's say I 10x my money. I was smart. I did my homework. I bought programs that taught me exactly you know, how to do what I needed to learn to get myself up. Now that I've made that money, I now pay 50% capital gains on money I've already been taxed at 53%. It's like, it doesn't matter where you go and what you do. They don't incentivize you to chase excellence. In fact, they do everything they possibly can to discourage it, in my view. They want you sucking on the government teat, okay? They want you eating bugs, living in a little box, owning nothing with access to everything. That's the big selling pitches. In the future, you're going to own nothing but have access to everything on universal basic income, living in your box, eating bugs, having access to everything, owning nothing, reliant on the state. That's what people vote for. You have to pay attention to voting patterns when it, when it comes to the question of can men save the West? So to the question of all of this, where am I in this camp? I, I think I've probably made it clear. I'm in the you know what, if they want to burn it down and it's already on fire, cool. I'll just sit back and let them do it. I'm going to control what I can control, which is my own life, my family, you know, those around me that I love and care for. And that's what I'm going to spend time on. It doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The arguments that I see and you know, when I see these like Miller Lite masculinity groups getting together and their Facebook groups and they've got, they've got a lot of people. Most of these guys are like, plugged in beta males and they legitimately believe that if they just love their wife enough and they put enough babies in the single mom that they met that already has three kids in tow from three different fathers and he has a fourth with her and steps up you know the, the father that stepped up to be the man to raise the other dude's kids he's going to save the west with his with you know with his miller light shed <clears throat> joining the group of strong masculine men. Mm. I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, let's do this. Um, I'm going to grab the invite link while I just kind of wrap up here on some of these ideas because I want to hear you guys chime in. Um, if you're watching this elsewhere, get your butts over to YouTube. I'm dropping a link there. Join in and ask a question or propose a solution. Let's hear your better solution. Let's see if we got anybody in the chat that has a better solution. Happy to chop it up, let's do it. Go in and ask a question, propose a better solution. So that's in the YouTube chat. And here, I'm gonna pin that one up at the top to replace the last pin message. Ba -ba -da -ba -bum. What do we got here? Do, do, do. Uh, teach kids become okay so we're at this guy over here surrender to god and live one day at a time okay that's your solution there was a lecture uploaded nope i cannot recommend that channel i am sorry it is not recommendable Alphas don't run away. We either fix it or we create something to replace it. If you run away, they will eventually find you. Okay, J J R R. the link is in YouTube. I appreciate your membership in the super chat. Come on in and let me know what your solution is. Again, it's fine to make the statement. I get it. We don't run away. We either fix it or we create something to replace it. What is your solution to save the West? That's what I want to hear. 
What's up, brother? Thanks for the super. Rolo says, we're presuming that the voting process is reliable and changing social structure. That's what people you know, seem to believe. Rich, you're a beta male. Sure, if you say so. Trump printed trillions on lockdown. L liberal light. Liberal. I think you wanted to spell, spell liberal there. Yep. Bum, bum, bum. What about the jab? What about it? No old man Aaron in this talk. This <laughs> Aaron's uh, Aaron doesn't have that much of a different opinion, to be honest with you. So uh, here, I'm going to grab my headphones. I see a bunch of you guys in the chat. Give me a second here to throw these bad boys on. All right, let's see what you guys got. And <clears throat> let me know in the private chat, guys, uh, what it is that you want to hit on so I can try to organize. So if you're in the waiting area, there's that little private chat button. Just let me know. What your uh, what your position is? I think uh, GB the general was there first, so I'm going to bring you in first, dude. All right, what's the word, brother? Yo, Rollo. Uh, I mean, my bad, um, Rich. I really appreciate you. You changed my life. You changed the way I understand everything. And I think not. I think I know the solution. The solution is to chase excellence, not women, and everything else will fall into place. <laughs> And I love that quote and I love that. If if you do this, if you're if you're on your purpose, if you're on your grind, you're not worried about things outside of your control. You have to like there's certain things that you got to surrender to. I can't I can't control the voting patterns of the plebs out there. The sheeple are 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 going to sheep. I can't I can't control the taxation rates where I live, but I can pick up and go somewhere else. Okay. There's only certain things that you can control. So I'm with you on that, brother. You know what? I really respect you. And I appreciate you. And you know what? Anytime someone's going through some bullshit, I always send them the links to your videos. And like you said, hypergamy is uh, evolutionary psychology. Ever since I started watching your videos, I started getting more into it and actually reading into it. And like, it's, it's back from the caveman days because they just want the best chance of survival for their eventual offspring that's all it comes down to it's all it boils down to it's it's a it's a feature of women that's it Rich, i freaking respect you and you know what i appreciate you thank you for changing my life i'm not going to take too much of your time step one unplugged alpha get the fucking book and read that shit <laughs> where did i put my book i usually flash it there it is right there guys it's on amazon thanks for the plug i appreciate it it's on audible print kindle get it Thanks, man. Have a great one. God bless you, brother. Hit those weights. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. Hey, thanks for your videos. Read your book about two months ago. Your videos and book are very valuable. Thanks. I got more coming out for you guys. I'm going to work on a follow-up to that book um, with some further content, a little bit more advanced content. I intend to run this podcast. Um, I'll put it this way. I intend to run this podcast, The Unplugged Alpha, for as long as I enjoy it. Maybe a thousand episodes, maybe a hundred, who knows? But stay tuned because I'm going to keep doing this every Monday night at 8 p.m. for as long as I'm still enjoying it. So let's put it that way. Do, 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 do. What is the practical, realistic answer to hypergamy? This is a woman asking me. There is, uh, there's no, it's, it's for guys, it's getting their head around what it is. Men compete, women choose. Okay. So be the best option. We, women don't need to change anything, you know, when it comes to hypergamy. They're like, when you find the right guy, when you find your best possible option, okay, when I say the right guy, I mean your best possible option, okay, then I'll put it to you this way. There was a guy in my community that that that, that put this private post out the other day, and I don't mind sharing the non-specifics of it, but his wife basically said, you're not perfect, but I'm never going to do better than you. That's what that's what is 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 keeping him secure in his marriage. He's like, "Yep. I know right now things are fine." She's like every other guy's invisible to her. Okay? It's a complex dynamic, man. There's a lot of like pieces to the puzzle when it comes to hypergamy. Can you recommend a coach for entrepreneurship, a coach who can provide solid guidance but who does not have a 7-8 figure cutoff? If you're not earning money in your business, uh, 
I'm going to tell you right now, you can't afford a, a proper coach that can advise you. I like the reason why he's using seven or eight figures is because that's my cutoff is I deal with seven or eight figures, professionals or entrepreneurs when it comes to my one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is why I've priced myself that way. You're going to find guys out there that will sell you the promise of success, the promise of take my blueprint and you too will be a fulfilled by Amazon Lambo driving success within the next three to six months, right? We've all seen these narratives. They pop up all the time. For the most part, they're total BS. The biggest skill that you must master as an entrepreneur, in my view, is the ability to solve problems. Can you solve problems? Because that's what a business is. It's a series of problems that come your way. How do I market this product or service to my customers? How do I deal with billing? How do I deal with this lawsuit? How do I deal with hiring issues? I need to deal with talent, da, 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 scaling. It's a series of problems. If you're not good at solving problems, if your mind's been conditioned to think within a box, which is what society wants you to be, they want you plugged in like sheep. They want you to color within the lines, cross your T's and dot your I's and never think outside of the box. You're gonna have a difficult time becoming an entrepreneur, okay? Learn how to think outside of the box. Learn how to solve problems. Those are the two most important skills. You don't need a coach right now. You need to master those skills. Once you start generating some receivables, then you can afford me. Then we can talk. Every major civilization had the following ending. Mass handouts to the population. Mass civilization of social mores. Feminization. Boom. Got it. Thanks. Would like to ghostwrite your first draft. Business idea. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. The only solution is to get out, protest, cause havoc, and make them shiver what we are doing. Just sit around waiting for the other guy to fix it. Trump to all the here with no one to back him up. What you're talking about there, when you're talking about protesting and causing havoc, you're talking about throwing a hissy fit, which is a feminine behavior. Okay, Men don't throw hissy fit. See, I can give you a perfect example of why this doesn't work when guys do it. Men's, right, men's rights activists have been around for a long time, decades now. And they've been and they've been trying to do the right thing. Like I tip my hat, you know, guys like Paul Elam and all the guys around them, they've they've got good intention, but they're not effective. They get together with a small handful of guys. Like even the video when they did that movie with uh Cassie J, uh, it was titled The Red Pill, and all she did was she hijacked the name for herself. The entire movie was basically about her. It wasn't about specifically towards men's rights and protecting fathers, giving them access to their kids. It was about that. So when guys get together and they hold up signs and they try to protest, you know, for men's rights and all that sort of stuff, they, they're never taken seriously. The only time protesters are taken seriously is when it's women. Hate to say it. You're going to have to get for for guys and i'm not going to say this on youtube but you're going to have to go a different route it's not about peaceful protests with signs it's a different route for men that's when they'll listen to you uh, how to fix the west fire lots of fire we live in an out destruct prequel shit's gonna get where yeah like okay so let me talk about that reset thing because that was brought up a couple of times. We need a reset. What about the great reset? What do you think of the reset, Rich? Ever since they started talking about this reset thing, dudes have been messaging me about the reset. You got to do a video on the reset. And I haven't done one. I'll tell you why. It's a waste of breath. It's a marketing strategy is what it is. Okay. They're getting you familiar with the marketing strategy of a reset. The kind of reset that we need, if you want to save things, if you want to improve things, if you want more autonomy, if you want the government, if you want people to leave you alone and have the freedom that you're looking for and not deal with the wokeness and the Karens, the kind of reset we need is what happened to the dinosaurs. I hate to say it, but it's going to have to be something big, you know, where a big chunk of the population, poof. That's the kind of reset. Men could save the West, but the only way would be illegal and we would be compared to the Taliban. And the funny thing is, is a lot of um, outlets, I'm going to say, you know, outlets is a, a term to try to define this because, again, I try to keep this thing clean, seem to 
pedestalize and appeal to reason and sensation when it comes to the Taliban, you know, if you haven't noticed. Conk says, MRAs have good info, bad strategy. Can't disagree. The only time that you're going to see men's rights activists become effective is when women get behind it and they apply the strategies that they use for themselves for men. But why would they? Why would you give up a strong advantage to yourself as a woman to further the cause of men and masculinity and fatherhood. There's no incentive for it. it just doesn't exist. <clears throat> up, um, micropigmentation. No, nope, no plans for that. I'm good. Increase your financial strength, emotional health, and mental strength each day. That's it. Regardless, the government is all that. Yeah, okay. That's that just boils down to the metal point of origin argument. The only way the West will be saved is if enough people take accountability for their lives and do the work better on themselves. No amount of legislation is going to change that generation. Uh, let me bring you back to exhibit A. Is if enough people... Now, he's... Brendan's right here, okay? Is if enough people take accountability for their lives and do work to better themselves. No amount of legislation is going to change a generation expecting hand. You can't legislate yourself into saving the West. You just can't. Okay. So to his point, let's go back to exhibit A here and let's go to voting patterns. What do people vote for? Okay. The key word here in his, in his super chat was accountability. Liberal party, is there any accountability? Nope. It's complete wokeness. NDP socialist? Nope. Not at all. Conservative, which is basically liberal light. Nope, not at all. Nope, nope, yep. This is the only one. This is what people vote for. 4% of the Canadian population are leaning in this party for accountability. I Listen, I hope Max Bernier gets it, but it's going to take a miracle. I'd be surprised if they even got a few seats in Parliament. We've got something like uh, 338 ridings, if I'm not mistaken, here in Canada. And the last election, the the party existed as well, got zero seats, a big donut, nothing. Boom, nothing. So let's see what happens this time around. Have you heard of Project, Precinct Project? Nah, it's probably some other garbage, but drop me a link if you have something on it. Uh, have you ever tried homeopathic medicine as a professional? Westerners are being wakened with suppressive conventional medicine. Um, I'm unconventional in my medical treatment, I take matters into my own hands for the most part. There are certain things that I'll rely on medical professionals for, and I do use natural medicine uh, as well. Um, I think a combination of science and natural proven, you know, homeopathic type of medicine can be beneficial if it's proven. And still strong values in our kids. So when the empire ends, we have made leaders in the next one. Hey, the phoenix always rises from the flames, okay? Humans are like cockroaches. We're very resilient, very, very resilient, okay? We, we've done a lot of stupid shit throughout history. Empires have come and gone. Um, I'm not like, hey, we're going to be around for a long time, like until the sun gets too big and, you know, consumes the earth sort of thing, you know, if we haven't left the earth and moved on to another galaxy and destroyed that as well, probably. <clears throat> I say every man for himself, the guys who do the work will enjoy the spoils and everyone else gets the scraps. That's mental point of origin. It's aligned with that. I agree with that. All right, let's see what we got here. Private chat. Uh, do we have anybody here in the private chat that has a solution to this problem that would like to come on? I don't see, I see Bitcoin's part of the solution. Uh, I have some Intel and some Atlas Shrug solutions. Okay, who's that? Rich? Rich, you're up, buddy. Good name. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All um, right. So, what is the solution to this problem? Okay. Um, I think to form a, the correct solution, to understand the problem that we're going into. So, um, at the moment, there's all this push for this green, equitable world revolution thing that's happening. Uh, and, and the problem is, we're about to be caught off guard by it since there is a theory going around the internet. I don't know if you guys have seen it but it's based on us hitting a certain epoch in climate cycles. So in Canada, North America, Denmark, um, Greenland, and Britain, the weather has got all wacky in strange patterns. 
Um, and they're trying to claim that there's food problems, but the food problems are based on supply. But I'm not so sure that that is the case um, because there's a lot of things that seem to correlate and some of the predictions some people have been making, um, specifically the Ice Age farmers, seems pretty reliable. Okay, you're you're kind of zipping around here a little bit, so let me just bring you back to the point. So, like, what is the solution to the problems facing the West right now? Because um, I think when the food supply goes and they try and push this bug protein and and uh, protein paste and whatnot, mm -hmm. I think all of this political activism is going to disappear because people are going to get sick and malnourished from it. Okay, but that's not an active solution. That's that's. That's a passive sit back and watch this unfold yeah, sort of I statement. Think, I, I don't think it's passive because it's it's pretty hard to to get prepared and to start like um, acquiring skills for a more agrarian economy and p particularly an indoor agrarian economy is quite difficult because you have to marshal like money from crypto into some farmland somewhere and you have to you have to build a local network up. Because we're going to get locked down, right? Like they're going to lock down, they're going to lock us down again. There's going to be very little access to food, so we're going to have to rely on people locally. So we've got to start getting ahead of this and building the networks now. Because if we say there's going to be okay, so you're you're leaning into the future, making a, a prediction about a problem that doesn't exist right now. We don't have food shortage shortage problems. There's no issues with food right now. We've got other problems that we're dealing with. So I mean. What is the solution to the problem that we have today is what I'm asking. Well, I think you've got to break the kids out of their woke activism because... Okay, so what is what is the solution to unwoking children? When the entire school system is designed to wokeify your kids. And most parents today, I mean, like one of the biggest things that you can do that's detrimental to your kids is put them in the elementary school system or in daycare, especially if you have a small child. Like... The like putting a three or four year old into a daycare system while you go to work to go and make your fifty thousand dollars a year to pay for the daycare system is the equivalent of essentially child abuse. I mean, you're doing your child a disservice. You're supposed to raise your kid yourself. This is what most people do today, right? So, yeah. how do you unwoke these children? I think you have to both scare them, but also give them a a better a better idea of the future they want to be in, which is probably more back to nature and with the animals and stuff like right. that. Right, but I mean, you can't unwoke all the children. A parent can unwoke their own child. How do they do that? They homeschool them, they make sure that they're under their wing until they're an adult, and they give them all the necessary tools and resources. But the vast majority of the population, as I pointed out here, let's go back to exhibit A, because I'm gonna keep going back to this, because I think voting patterns is very important. The vast majority of the population supports you know, we're talking 60, 70, 80, like we're talking about 80% of the Canadian population anyway, supports the system as it stands right now. So that doesn't solve anything. If let's say, let's say five or 10% of the North American population homeschools their kids, un unwokeifies them, you know, gives them all the tools and resources, tells them, you know, teaches them how to hunt and trap and, and grow their own food and not, not deal with the Karens and the political correctness and all that other nonsense you're still not going to solve the problem. So that's still not a solution. Well, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm betting on certain things happening and I'm trying to get ahead of them. So I, I think the vaccine passport. So hope, so hope is your plan is what you're saying. Well, I, I guess hope is I'm, a terrible plan. How many times <laughs> have I said hope is a terrible plan, Rich? Well, it's, I'm not, the future isn't exactly optimistic in my, my worldview, but um, I, I think if, if we are locked down to smaller communities, it gives us a chance to actually walk out and meet people and start planning. Got it. Face okay. To face. Or, or I'm gonna I'm gonna switch you out because I got like the entire area is waiting here for people to chime in, and we're not getting to a specific solution. But I want to thank one, you for chiming in, though. But one thing, could you could you check out the Ice Age Farmer and just keep an eye on things he's saying there? The Ice Age Farmer. What is that? Is that a YouTube? Is that a, a website? Uh, what his telegram is less censored, so you can check that out. But you can probably find him on YouTube or BitChute. Got it. Okay, thanks for the shout out. Appreciate it. All right, let's see what we got here. You guys can check that out for yourself, do your own research if you want to. Um, 
<laughs> Let's go back to some of the supers here to catch up. Oh uh, boy, this is a good topic tonight, guys. You guys are loving this one. Um, strong values. We talked about that. Every man for himself. Uh, is Gen Z more conservative or liberal in the U.S.? The voting patterns say liberalism overall. And even conservative parties today are not conservative anymore. They're now liberal, liberal light, whatever it is you want to call it. Uh, Clutch says firearms are the solution. Well, let me tell you what's going on here in Canada. I think there's populations under 40 million now. And there's just under 2 million licensed firearm owners and they use them for hunting, um, varmint, you know, stuff on their property for legitimate useful reasons. Okay. Um, the Trudeau government has, and, and all governments prior to him have slowly stripped away access to firearms for citizens. Um, they're trying to do the same thing in the U S I don't think that they're going to be nearly, um, as successful as they've been in, in in Canada, but you know, for example, I think it was uh, it was two or three years ago there was a shooting in the East Coast. Uh, the guy was mentally deranged. He was using a uh, illegally acquired um, police cruiser uniform, and I, if I'm not mistaken, in fact, I'm I'm, I'm like ninety nine point nine percent sure the firearms that he acquired were on the black market. They weren't they weren't registered. But what did the Trudeau government do? Guns are bad. Let's take more guns away from people. The government is, is stripping firearms away from the population. They don't want you armed. New Zealand did it to the entire population. Canada is doing it. The United States is trying to do it. Heads up. Fabio, uh, I for once embraced the end, surviving in a Mad Max world on my bucket list solution would be World War III. Hand got really <laughs> Hey, look, man, I, I'm, this is where you'll see, like, you know, guys are like, oh, you're not an alpha male? Okay. Let's see what happened when the shit hits the fan. Are you prepared? Do you know what to do? Can you, can you acquire food and resources? Let's see what happens then. Then you'll see the alpha males shine. Uh, Depan, married 20 years, divorce 10, celibate, post-divorce, raised kids, finally dating now and love the freedom, financially secure. Should I marry again? It's not really on topic tonight, Depan, but you do what's right for you. That's what they tell women. You, you do what's right for you, girl. Okay, let's go back to the chat here. Okay, so let's see if we got solutions here. Uh... Let's talk to you about the subject of your perspective. Coach Kareem. Where's my boy Kareem? There he is. Okay, I'll bring you in a sec. Let me just see what else I got here. Hold on. Uh, that's facts. Topic saving the West. I need to kick out the fake conservatives. I'm still not seeing anybody in the private chat giving me a solution. Disable social programs. Okay, so how so how do you disable social programs? Where's where's Andrew? Where's Andrew? There you are. All right, Andrew. Yes, hi. So, so your solution is disable social programs. So how do we disable social programs? Well, the only way to disable social programs is to simply stop the government from spending so much money. And the way to how? do that is to stop the, the fake dollar, which is just being printed out of thin air. How? So once we peg that dollar to something, some kind of real asset, whether it's crypto, whether it's gold, we've got to peg that. That way the government cannot just spend it out of thin air. Okay, and, so okay, yeah. so devil's advocate now. So sure. if you're saying that the blockchain and cryptocurrency is a you know is a solution to get off fiat currency, if I understand you correctly, if I'm paraphrasing, yeah, sure, okay. either that or gold or some real asset, yeah. Okay, so why why would the government give up control of a fiat currency that they can print in un unlimited quantities? They can they can set terms and conditions. They're even trying to regulate the blockchain, right? Obviously, you know they're trying exactly. to regulate. That's what I'm worried this. about too, with the taxation but and less things than. Less than 2% of the world population uses cryptocurrency right now. Most right. of the population doesn't vote for that as a policy. They still believe the, the government cares about them. So Terrible. that's so. how is that a solution? Well, I think in the end, it's going to end up crashing anyway. So if you look at the dollar, they're just going to inflate it away. That's so just eventually, hope. we're going to have to move to that something. Just, whoa, whoa, hold a sec. That just brings us back to the hope protocol, which is a terrible fucking plan, right? Hoping that things collapse. Right. So again, let's go back to exhibit A. What are what are people voting for? Large government, tons of money printed, 
big social yeah. programs, free shit right. at the cost of freedom. So yeah, the solution you're saying would be let's let's move everybody over to a new monetary system, which nobody seems to want. Right. Now, nobody's going to do it. But I, I mean, it, I, guys you like know, you and I get it. Sure, guys that take sure. the Cultivate Crypto course get it. And they're making yeah. shitloads of money and it's expanding. And it, right. and it probably will replace the fiat currency system when it collapses. But I'm not. It doesn't have to collapse. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I, I'm yeah. not hoping for any of that. Right. Right. I'm 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 here right now knowing that this has future potential and there's lots of right. upside so I'm going to make some money along the way right like I a lot of guys are like I hate crypto. the jab I hate the jab I hate the jab I hate okay you know right. what though I'm not for it either but you want to make some money you should have got into Pfizer and Moderna and all those stocks <laughs> that's true a year ago right yeah that's facts yeah okay all right man thanks all right let's uh Let's see solutions solutions guys i'm looking for solutions specifically first here in the private chat take over the conservative party from the bottom up cut off welfare and women's vote okay where's alex so alex has a solution for us he says take over the conservative party from the bottom up cut off welfare and women's vote how do you do all that alex can you hear me yeah i got five percent so i'll be quick so can you hear me yeah yeah go ahead Yeah, so basically, you have to get involved at the, with the Conservative Party at the bottom level. At your, uh, uh, t take it over. Uh, vote out the fake uh, conservatives. That's what the precinct project is about, because half the Republican Party precincts are not even f filled. So libertarians could take over the Republican Party in the U.S. And, and uh, once in, in power, you, uh, start, you phase out. Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security by 100 bucks a month and uh, pass a constitutional amendment. It's not easy. It is going to be a long trek through the party. But Okay, and uh, you've also got here in your work. private chat, and you've also got here in the private chat and women's vote. So how do you plan on taking away women's voting rights? Only it's through the Constitution. Get to pass an amendment. Okay. I'm going to let you go because I know your battery's about to die and I'm going to do a little monologue on this. So uh, what what Alex said is you take over the conservative party from the bottom up. I'm going to bring back exhibit A here. For those of you that don't know, living, living in the United States, the uh, PPC party is run by Max Bernier. He was a former conservative uh, riding holder. He had a seat. He didn't like the way the party was going. And his view was exactly what Alex just said. Let's take over the party. Nobody in the party supported that notion. So he left and formed his own party called the People's Party of Canada, which is a libertarian party, which gentleman Alex was describing. What percentage of the votes is the country casting for that right now in the, in the polls? 4%. If you don't have the masses vote, like supporting those changes, those changes will never happen. Bottom line, that is a hope plan. Hope plans do not work. I've, I've yet to hear somebody come up with a strategy, a viable strategy, in my view, because one of the arguments that you hear a lot of guys making, especially you know, like the MGTOW guys uh, like to make the argument, you know, repeal the 19th, take away women's voting rights. Cool story, bro. How are you going to do that? Who is going to support that when the vast majority of the North American population, more specifically in the United States, is weak, low T, you know, simping for women constantly. Do you think that they're going to support taking away women's voting rights? It's not going to happen. I don't see a viable strategy to change that. Um, let's see what we got here. State back stable coins are coming. Okay, tech. Don't rely on the bot. Yeah. I don't see a lot of solutions here. We need a, okay, here's one. We need an alternate educational system where kids are not taught garbage. A society that's more correctly informed and educated results the next generation. Humans not tolerated. Okay, where's Shaika? Where are you? There you are. Okay, so I just read off your uh, super. What's up, bro? Can you yeah. hear me? Shake. Shake. Yeah, it's actually pronounced Shake. Sorry, but totally pronounced it wrong. So you want to uh, revamp the educational system so kids are not taught garbage in a society that's correctly informed and educated results the next generation of humans not tolerating the BS and, and tyranny. So... The entire school system, again, I'm going to come back up here to exhibit A. 
the liberal government and the conservative yeah. government, which is, you know, liberal light basically here in, in Canada, supports exactly what's being taught in the school mm -hmm. system. Wokeness, political correctness, inclusivity, um, yeah. using pronouns. Like, I remember there was a time I was driving and I think my kid was in grade three or four or something like this. So this was a few years ago. And she said something to me like, well, why would you assume their gender? And I was like, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Where the hell is this coming from? Right. Like, yeah, this is what totally the school system yeah. teaches right now. So why would they change that to support a narrative that is going to reform kids so they're not taught garbage, you know, stuff that actually serves them? So what's your solution to that? No, I totally agree with you, Rich. Uh, I mean, the mainstream educational system has just gone down south. It's part of the problem. I mean, I'm in agreement with you, but how do you solve that? Yeah, it is. So this is just an idea that just popped in my head, like um, an online alternative educational system. You know, kids are taught from either through Zoom or through all. They tried that last yeah, year when like they were on lockdown. Education. They tried that last year when kids were on lockdown, teaching them by, by mm -hmm. Zoom. But, but you can't mm -hmm. see... The truth of the matter is you can't rely on the educational, the, the public educational system to not infuse, like the government wants to preserve itself, right? Like when the prior gentleman said, you know, well, we yeah. have to, we have to take over the conservative party from the bottom up. I've been involved with bureaucrats yeah. and politicians for a year and a half when I was lobbying on bill 55 here in Ontario. I know what these people are like. They don't care about the public. All they care about is preserving yeah. their position, their job, getting a big fat retirement, not working that much, taking the time off that they get. That's what they seem to care about in my view. So yeah, why would I, they go and change an educational system that empowers people to think for themselves? They don't want you thinking for yourselves. They, in my view, from what I can see anyway, by looking at it, because all I'm doing here, guys, is I'm looking at data points, like I'm just collecting data points and I'm connecting dots. And the data points just tell me that the system doesn't want you as an individual. They don't want you thinking. They don't want you innovative. They don't want you questioning things. They want you compliant. Yeah. You know? And uh, I'm 100% uh, on the same page. Um, I mean, I live in the United States, and Republicans and Democrats, when it comes to like gynocentrism, really, there's not much, much of a difference. So, as I personally have done my own education on various things, that's why I have really uncommon views when it comes to a lot of things. So what I, and again, I, I know I have to do a lot more brainstorming on this, mm -hmm. but I just think we need to get kids at, as much at an early age as possible, especially boys to start thinking in an alternate manner and, and realize that the edu mainstream educational system is not what it's cracked up to be. I think Listen, early I'm, on, I'm, in, I'm in full agreement, but yeah, especially boys get to know. It got it, bro. And I'm in full agreement with you here on this, but but you're not coming at this with a with a solution that we can kind of tackle. So just in the interest of making sure that I get to everybody in the time allotted, I'm gonna let you go. I'm working on it. I mean, oh, cool, cool. Definitely, definitely. Okay. All right. Cool, man. Yeah. Talk to you later, bro. Cheers. All right. Uh, let me bring in Kareem, um, my boy Kareem. We did a uh, cast prior in the summer i think in the spring on your podcast uh um, yeah how, how you doing my friend i'm great i'm great it's been a long time how you do rich good man so what's the word what do you think about all this stuff like you know can we save the west or just let it burn uh i have a, like uh, i have a bigger perspective than than these details that uh, th there was there was talking about there there is a great book actually a great great book really I, I really recommend it it's called the death of the west by Patrick J. Uh, uh, Pacanan. Okay, it is talking about like a million variable that uh, uh, that uh, because of it the West will fall, the West will will die. And he wrote it in 2010, and the number was very modest comparing to now, like the number of divorce, abortion, like a lot of things. Was there any okay, solutions so in the book to the problem? No, it's it's he's saying and and he's by the way he was saying you're screwed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's saying it's inevitable. Okay. It is inevitable. So from a bigger perspective, you have like you have you have a big problem, which is like democracy. I'm sorry to say that it's very shocking because like, why do I let like a bunch of idiots make uh, make like a great decision for me? No. So 
there is there is two type of solution and both is uh, mm, unapplicable why because the first one you need the enlightenment dictator like an alpha like a well knowledge alpha with bunch of uh, well knowledge guys which to nobody seems that. to like anymore today like y yes. anytime you have an alpha male like a like a white straight like alpha male that like has that imposing sort of figure they they just grind the guy down man they just hate guys like that yes. now Exactly. So th this will get like a, a radical changes toward the uh, positivity, and that will never happen in the West. That's okay. That's that's for voting patterns. You know, specifically when I'm talking about that, like women will do different things behind closed doors. You know, just just so I'm clear on that. Yeah. So the second the second option is to change it by democracy. So you need to change the collective awareness of the whole population, and that will take one to two generation, twenty five to fifty year to change the collective awareness of the whole population. That's almost impossible. That's, so, uh, that's right there. It, it, it goes back to my first exhibit is when we start seeing people vote for policies that support what it, exactly it is that you're defining there, that's when you're going to see a turnaround. But until then, when you, you know, when you watch what's happening, this is what you're getting. Let me ask you this question, because um, you're in the Middle East and, yeah. um, you know, like as an outside observer, like you're watching what's happening in Western countries. Um, how are things in the Middle East for you as a man? Like, you know, do you see, do you see an ascent? Do you see a decline? Like, where do you see things? Like, is it growing or is it dying? Uh, on a demographic level, no, we are growing. Like, right. we are we are above 2.5, like 3, 3.2, 3.5. Birth rate. De depend. Yeah, yeah, birth rate, replacement yeah. rate. So, so nothing, nothing to be compared with, uh, with Canada and the Western democratic country. Right. So in demographic level, but we are we are now fighting the like the value exported from the West toward us. And it's very difficult to fight. So you're it. dealing with the wokeness is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, as far as immigration goes, because there is a lot of immigration coming to Canada from around the world, a good chunk of it comes from the Middle East. It's not fixing anything. But you're seeing that wokeness is being imported to the Middle East as well, too. Exactly. I'm starting to see it on um, apps like uh, TikTok, actually, because because I because I update usually about two to three times a week, you know, with shorts on a TikTok, and they have this homepage, and you scroll through it. And today, I saw a Middle Eastern woman with tattoos on her face, showing a good part of her body, behaving very Westernly. Yes, but the, the rest of uh, conservative, which is the biggest layer of uh, of the society, you will never see her and or he hear about her. Mm -hmm. So you, you're, you're checking like uh, the sliver uh, liberal uh, layer of the society. Hmm. What was the name yeah, of that book again? It is, it is called The Death of the West okay. by Patrick J. Pakenon. The Death of the West. It have like, like a lot of indicators and variables that will make the West fall anyway. So to hmm. change it as, as, as one man, ah, that's in your dream. You, can, you, cannot, you cannot do it. Mm. But uh, uh, let me say this, you can't change anything else without fixing your own problems. So you have to start by yourself, even if you was thinking about the West. That's it, mental point of that? origin. Thanks, brother. Yeah. All right, see you, man. You're most, most welcome. Take care. Take care. Yeah, that's it. That's what, really what it boils down to at the end of the day. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, we got a lot of supers here to catch up on. Freedom's not popular. Apologies if I skip over some. Let me just see here real quick. Freedom's not a popular thing. Most humanity likes to be followers. Why don't you not, sorry, why won't you not milk the cows? Um, so again, back to exhibit A. People don't vote for freedom. They vote for free shit, i.e. these parties over here are the free shit parties. You vote for them. They basically give you the bare necessities of life. I mean, you'll never fulfill your own potential relying on government to provide that for you. It's, it's just never, ever, 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 ever going to happen. But you might just cope. Uh, money, Gardner says, no collective solution possible. Individual solutions are plenty. Go to where you treat it best. Money grows on trees. Yeah, making an exit seems to be one of the better solutions. Uh, this would be a great topic for you to discuss with the Rage and Dissident. I like that guy, Jeremy. Um, I'd be happy to um, have a conversation with him at some point. So, um, 
maybe we'll make it happen. Alex says, take the iPads, iPhones out of the infant's hands, brainwash from infancy. Listen, this is this is legitimately like what Alex is saying here. This is a complete and colossal failure with parenting right now. Parents give their children screens and devices at an age when they don't have the maturity, the mental capacity to deal with everything coming at them from those devices. The other problem with that though, is they start using apps because all the cool kids do it because all the other loser parents give it to the, all the kids and they have to have it and they tell their friends and they all get it. And then before you know it, you got a small child who could be 10, 11, 12, 13, who's looking at things like TikTok or Instagram with like, these are children, legitimately still children. Okay. Looking at adult content getting fed information and narratives that they shouldn't have any exposure to because parents are too lazy to be parents. It's easier for them to give their kids a device. And I see this all the time in a restaurant. It drives me fucking nuts. Parents sitting around here and they got their kids on a tablet, usually with a big foam pad around it because they drop it so many times with headphones on and they're going like this or they're playing some video game like this. And the parents are doing the same thing too. The parents are like this. You know, I saw this mom once swiping on a, a dating app with her kids sitting over there and they're all looking at their screen like this. It's a colossal failure in parenting, but it's normalized. I mean, even Steve Jobs did not let his kids have screens when they were small. Zimzilla. Again, watch what happens around you, people. Watch what happens. Before you get too excited about saving anything, watch how people behave and decide if it's worthwhile saving. Zimzilla, are there any independent or up-and-coming politicians who are chasing excellence? We have many possibilities with big followings across social media, but there, are, but are there any with the political capital to make changes? No. I mean, Max Bernier, who's the Canadian uh, PPC leader, you know, the purple guy over here in 4% of the holdings, is the closest thing to that. And at the end of the day, he's still a lifelong politician. You know, just like women always reserve the rights to change their mind, they could be feeding you lines of bullcrap to get votes, and then they unilaterally decide to change later once they're in power to go and continue to do things to preserve their ability to maintain that power and the longevity of their positions and all that sort of stuff, right? It's another one, quite simple. We did in Russia, stop paying taxes for people, report less in payroll and pay people around official accounting for business. The only thing that works, starve them financially. Well, yeah, that um, that was uh, one of the contributing factors to the fail of the um, USSR. Um, there's a lot of under the table stuff. You know, you'd go to a doctor and you needed stitches and he would say, well, I can do it this way where the state pays me, or if you want to give me some money under the table and make it look nice, right? Heard a lot of stories like that from former Russians about what it was like to live under communism. And yet we have a good, let's go back to exhibit A again. We have a good chunk of the population, liberal and NDP are very strongly to, 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 to the left, you know, towards socialism, social programs, free money, lots of printing, lots of, you know, UBI, you know, huge taxation rates. It's leaning into that category. And they think that that's a solution. It doesn't solve anything. It destroys. For education, build business clubs for those that want better education for the kids. Use private education. Private education, having the money to homeschool your kids. Um, this is where having money helps, okay? Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. If you have money, you can solve a lot of problems, including what goes on in the world today. There... <laughs> I can't remember who was it that that said this, but I saw this tweet once and this dude said something along the lines of it's 40 years in the future. The entire population is on universal basic income. Their food is taken care of, their accommodations taken care of, they live in boxes and they eat bugs and they don't have to worry about healthcare, dental or anything like that. But there's an elite ruling class in the sky the cloud people because they've got the money hey could it happen we'll see i don't know fabio there's no solution rich shit got corrupt to the core there's no party or solution it's sad because even if you survive it yeah, yeah. 
is exactly like again i'm in the mental point of origin camp take care of yourself make sure you put yourself for uh, first you know all that sort of stuff um book to read a true history of the united states haven't read it yet thanks for the recommendation all right what do we got here let's see what we got going on in the private chat who's got solutions for me Let's abandon the colleges. Here, I'm going to bring in Chris Baker. He's uh, He's got some notes here. Chris, what's up, buddy? Hi, Rich. Uh, you know... You know, 30 years ago, you know, we saw the Soviet Union collapse and we thought Marxism... Lower your volume a tiny oh, bit? Sorry. Really loud. Okay. Yeah. Or, just, or just pull the mic away a bit. Yeah, we thought Marxism was dead. But it never went away on the college campuses. I mean, I think the only way we're going to save the West is to just see a mass exodus from the colleges. I mean... And as from what I hear, it's a problem everywhere, not just in America. Well, there, l school is a big part of the problem, and and, and it just changes at different yeah. ages. Like you know, even in the daycare centers where where parents dump off their ki their kids, you know, which they're supposed to give a damn about between the ages of like three and four and a half, or two and four and a half in some cases. In some cases, it's like year and a half old toddlers are, are getting dropped off at daycare centers because parents don't have the capacity to raise their own children. And then they put them in an elementary school system, which goes into a public high school system, which teaches them all the same woke nonsense, not a lot of life skills. Um, the main skills that, that, that guys need to learn, because I know a lot of my audience is guys, you know, specifically is how to make bank, what women respond favorably to, you know, how to be masculine, like, you know, the standard big stuff, like on a balance of probabilities, there was a course that I took one time. Um, what was it on? It was on like stats or it was, wasn't even on st stats. It was on like, you know, if you were on a, a, a TTT, you know, like a TTC bus downtown and you were in the third car from the front, what would the percentage of people on the bus be that were, straight gay trans black white yellow and gay trans and 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 gay black and all it's like really like this is what we're trying to figure out like this is a skill that i'm going to you know use in my lifetime and this was when i was in school and then you go to university and here's the worst part i've got a lot of friends that have put their kids through university i know a guy specifically that put two daughters through university and they came out hating him they came out hating men one of them um became a journalist and gave a, a talk. He paid for the entire university program. She gave a talk to a big campus of academics and spent the entire time praising mom and shitting on dad. He was like, what the hell happened to my kids? Oh, I believe it. Yeah. Okay, so is it a problem? Yeah, what is the yeah. solution to that? Really guys, like you're not gonna save the world by hoping that the school system changes. You can probably save your own kids yeah. and then release them on the world that exists when it exists by homeschooling them. That's my view yeah. anyway. Well, you know, Rich, we also have an issue. You know, my grandfather walked two miles to school each way as a first grader. Uphill. We are we are so coddling kids now and we're not letting them take risks in the name of, you know, safety. I mean you know, I can remember high, I can remember high diving boards. Kids don't have high diving boards at public pools anymore. And all this other stuff. All the details. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just nuts. I mean, I, I would you know, tell any kid to watch, you know, like a sitcom from the fifties or the sixties and you can see how kids used to live. You know, it wasn't this super protected existence that we have now. And then we wonder why they're so soft. Yep. It is what it is. All right, Chris, I'm going to let you go because i got a Thanks. bunch of other people I want to get here too. Thanks, man. All right. Um, save the West. Let's abandon the college. All right. My solution is, okay. There was a Let It Burn guy here that had it. Is Let It Burn? No. He doesn't have an image on. Uh, I got Abel, Marty, Nate, BD, Let It Burn. Tell me what it is that you want to talk about, guys. I'm assuming the let it burn guy is on the let it burn down camp. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull you in. So what do you got to say, my friend? Hello. Okay. You're out. Marty and Nate, let me know what it is, what you want to chop it up on. All right. In the private chat there. <clears throat> do, do, do. We are in the West described on the sinking Titanic. And the only thing we can do is hop on a lifeboat and skedaddle. 
Yeah. You know, I, you know, I hear a lot of these guys are like, well, I'm just going to go live in a cabin in the woods and, you know, get off the grid and all that sort of stuff. Okay. That's not saving the West, though. That's just saving yourself and disconnecting from all of that sort of stuff, right? Doesn't save anything. Saving it's 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 a mental point of origin strategy, I think. Right. But could having more individuals in school and higher education be beneficial for young men so they aren't as lost as when they become uh where's Nate? Nate. So Nate's got this question here. Could having more individuals in school and higher education be beneficial for young men? So like one of the problems with all of this, Nate, is you've you've got a school system that the problem is most guys are not men anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Rollo says that they're they're treated in the school system like defective girls. Even when I was in the school system, um, I can pretty much agree that I was schooled like a defective girl, right? If you if you can't sit still, there's something wrong with you, right? If you don't mm -hmm. color within the lines, there's something wrong with you. If you don't get straight A's like all the girls, there's something wrong with you, right? It, it can't possibly be the way the system's structured, the way that it teaches, you know, kids, right? They shove them in these little boxes in classrooms all day with fake lighting and expect them to do well. So mm -hmm. what do you think about a solution to all that? Do you have um, something? I know generally, um, you can hear me, right? Loud and clear. Okay. So I know from my own personal experience, I did private school when I was younger and then transferred into public school and now I'm doing university. So I know from my own experience, I had a lot more of a connection with my male professors mm -hmm. and just the environment they gave off and sort of how they were teaching things was more conducive to my and how I could um, excel in terms of my education. So mm -hmm. I know not a lot of men go into education. They don't see a lot of money in it generally. So I'm not sure if that is something that could be possible. Well, there's a lot less men teaching children today. And I'll tell you what, like the men that were teaching kids were teaching classes like shop. Like I remember shop was one of the classes that um, disappeared after I left the school system. And they mm -hmm. would teach you basic skills like how to use a drill, how to use a bandsaw, how to, you know, um, I've got a, a, a cutting board. I don't have it anymore. I gave it to my parents when I was a kid, but they still have the cutting board that I made for them mm -hmm. where I basically put together these different pieces of um, wood um, in different colors and from different sources. And it's still together to this day because that's what craftsmanship was. Like they taught you craftsmanship. They don't exist in the school system anymore. So again, it brings me back to, you know, the point of, well, what is the population doing, right? Like, what are we mm -hmm. voting for? And it's like, you know, well, we're voting for policies that, remove things like masculinity and useful skills like craftsmanship from the school system. So when they take the guys out of those conventional roles, like the ones that are teaching you shop skills, men start to disappear. Automotive was another um, class that one of the high schools had that a friend of mine transferred from our high school to another high school when we were kids because he wanted to you know, work with his hands. He wanted to work on, on cars. Those don't exist anymore. They don't have shop in high schools anymore where they teach boys how to, I mean, I bet if you were to ask, I mean, if you were to walk into a mall or some urban you know, center and ask 20 men, do you know how to change a tire? I bet the vast majority of them don't own a car, have a driver's license and have never, and would never know how to change a flat tire, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the state of things. So, you know, when I bring you guys back to exhibit A, it's like, I'm, I'm just saying, hey, this is where we're at right now, right? This is what society wants to vote for is the empire of nothing. Yeah, um, because I know personally, even at my old high school, we did still have shop. We also had finances, which was done primarily by men. So a lot of it was just teaching about spending as well as budgeting things out. So could it be possible to sort of work on standardizing the school system better so that we make sure that how there are things like that? How do you do that? How do you change that when everybody votes for policies that don't support that? Is it possible to sort of like? maybe do individual studies to see if it's like how viable it is for like students in terms of their success out of um, high school or even vocational schools, for example. Cause I know that close to me, there is a vocational school which teaches mostly like practical skills like electrician, plumbing, mm -hmm. automotive and all that stuff. So like, I think- so how, that, do you, so how do you get them to change that? Nobody seems to want to yeah. change that. I, I mean, like it's getting so bad in the school system now that schools are now firing teachers only when they get caught for trying to indoctrinate children with things like 
uh, Antifa and like radicalist, you know, sort of ideas, right? Like there was a teacher, I think it was in California, was it? Yeah. Recently that got canned only because he got caught doing it. Otherwise he would have still been in the system. There was, right? I know there was one in California. I think the other one was also in California. They, it was something else. They yeah. go in, you know, they go and protect that ideology. It's like, you know, they'll just look, the, oh, fine. Okay. You know, we'll just look the other way until a parent says something. Right. And then it takes a whole group of parents, you know, to change that sort of thing. But that's just that one guy. Mm -hmm. Right. There's not a movement that I'm seeing anyway. Like there's not a decisive order of things where things are changing. Now, that being said, it's happening in other parts of the world. I don't know if you know this, but in China, they've recently banned or, or sorry, they're, they're, they're limiting the amount of time that kids can play video games now. Mm -hmm. They've banned anything on TV that's like classified, you know, essentially as like effeminate male sort of broadcasting, like sissy boys, like K-pop and stuff like that. And I believe I saw something a few months ago as well that mandated boys to basically have masculinity training, like, you know, to learn how to develop a strong masculine physique and, you know, competency skills and stuff like that. Yeah. So China's already won. That last part about China, China has already won. Right. Like we are we are allowing society to, you know, spiral into this position. And I don't think personally that it's a good use of time to fight it because nobody seems to want to fight it. It's it's a better use of time to manage yourself, the people around you and control those things. And if you think, you know, something like an exit or moving somewhere else where you're going to be treated better is a good idea. Consider that as well. You know, that's always mm -hmm. a you know certain uh, solution to the problem, too. Gotcha. All right. Cool, man. Thanks, Thank Nate. You. See ya. Um, let me get to a few more of these supers. We are, did I get this one? We're in the West. Okay. We did, did the Titanic one. I hope gas cars will remain in some capacity. You know what? There's good news on this front. It's a good thing that you brought this up. I heard that Porsche has developed a synthetic fuel because they have such a huge following around classic 911s. And these cars are so well built that they're going to last for a long time. I've heard that they've got a patent and it's, and it's just as, just as efficient, but clean. And it's a synthetic fuel. So you don't need to drill for it. There's no, uh, big refinery process, you know, expensive sort of process and the way it burns, it's a lot cleaner. Um, I haven't seen the full details on it. I don't think they made it public, but I subscribe to some, uh, feeds on, certain channels that send me information about automotive news and I've come across that. So there is some hope, you know, from that angle. Um, I don't have an electric car yet. I don't have any plans in the near future to buy one of them. I think they're soulless personally. They're fast as hell. Um, but I'm not moving to one just yet. Decentralization says, uh, Mr. Ferreira, uh, we have a few chairs that we citizens fill time to give power to, sorry, give power for specialized areas voting for health minister for instance let me take us back to exhibit a what are people voting for liberalism socialism free shit free shit comes at the expense of freedom and you get high taxes along with it i don't see society voting for what mr ferrer is talking about over here uh, I'm with coach Kareem, no solution to the West. It's going to fail by design. The great reset, as you said, rich is a public publicity stunt. It's a plot twist that we humans are the ones getting reset it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, you know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Uh, where are we at here? We're at the hour and 30 minute mark. All right, guys in the private chat. What is it that you want to talk about? Let me come down over here and see what you got for me. Uh, BD, you want to come on? I see you got a, a couple of points here. Just give me a thumbs up if you want to talk about those. Okay. Can you send information to the fuel? Funny, I heard. Uh, Marty, with respect to the information on the fuel, just search for uh, Porsche and synthetic fuel because they're the ones that are doing the development on it. Um. All right, let's bring in BD. So we got we got our uh, we got our resident Younglin here. Hi, uh, buddy. Good, good. What do you so got for me? if the future is moving closer towards you know universal basic income, everything's going to be taken care care for you. So my idea is you just play their game, but you play it better. And the only way you could do this is through uh, 
some sort of cryptocurrency based off Ethereum on limited coins. But, you know, why do you go to college? You know, why do you work? You know, a lot of it is monetary based. Okay, so, so let's so let's just go back to the notion of Ethereum being part of the solution. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay, so Ethereum is decentralized, mostly anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Unlimited tokens. Yeah. So why would the government give up their monetary system to adopt a blockchain-based system like Ethereum, like Ether? Well, you, you could say it's they're they're kind of like trying to get rid of crypto as is. They're not big fans of it because it threatens them, obviously. But the idea is if a currency besides, obviously there's going to be a fight for that, but if a currency could incentivize actions, and that this is how the future is going to move, and it's going to move in such a way where you're going to be incentivized to, let's say, oh, you're going to get paid if you walk your dog or if you recycle or if you drive an electric car or if you say hello to okay. your neighbor. That's, mm -hmm. all, that's all fine and dandy, but I mean, the, right. the problem still remains. The entire purpose of government, and I don't think that a lot of guys are getting this as they're watching this right now, even as they're coming in. The entire purpose of government is centralized control. Mm -hmm. Why would the government give up centralized control and power that they've exerted for decades? Like they've gone from, you know, we've gone from an environment where men were at the head of the household. They controlled their lives. Their house was their castle and all within were their vassal, like, you know, all that sort of stuff. They've, you know, we've gone to a place now where the state is the head of the household. The government gets to decide, even with your 12 year old kid in your, in your mm -hmm. household, what medical injections that they will take yeah i'm with you i'm so, with you there and so it, why would the government give up control of a monetary system that they have full right. control over mm -hmm. for something that they don't well we're not asking them to give up control it's something that like for example the government didn't give cryptocurrency the voice to have power or influence but yet it does so, so what you're talking about is convincing the public to adopt something Again, and, the problem still, you know, still come, it, well, comes back over to yeah. Exhibit A, where right. the public doesn't support that notion. The public tells us that by by their voting patterns, that they are supporting liberalism. They are supporting massive government with massive control. So you're not going to have them, you know, step away from that mm -hmm. so long as, you know, the vast majority of the population believes that that's good. See, people don't want freedom. Again, you know, they want free stuff. And exactly, exactly. And that's what this is. And it's free stuff based on actions and whoever is free the stuff from the government, action. free stuff from big daddy government, free health care, yeah. free dental, yeah. free accommodation, free food, free everything is, yeah. is better than Ethereum based blockchain stuff. Yeah, that's, that's their, uh, how do you say their actions? in order to benefit you. And so your solution is flawed because because it mm -hmm. assumes that the vast majority of the public is smart enough to see that as a better opportunity, right? And well, they're not. It, it's, it's dependent on the thing that they are receiving for the action. Is it valuable enough? And that, that's where the- They don't, the vast majority of the public sees greater value in supporting big government. They still do. I, I mean, where do you live again? You live in the States, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, watch the election here on September 20th, I think it is. Um, you're going to see who, you know, comes out of this. And it's either going to be a minority liberal government or probably a minority conservative, which is really liberal light now here. Mm -hmm. um, that's what the vast majority of the population is going to vote for, which is going to mean big taxes, less personal freedoms, vaccine passports will still exist all that sort of stuff. It's like, you know, control, 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 control. Government doesn't want to give up on control. Government exactly. wants government wants you under their thumb. They want you under that thumb so that you're you're controllable. They want you weak, now, they want mm -hmm. you stupid, and they want you plugged into lies. Now, using your example here, uh, so let's say, you know, you're talking about children and childcare, right? And yep. often the mom will like go to work. So what if she was in that situation, she realized, oh, she could earn the same amount for that day but if she parented her own child and with incentivized cryptocurrency actions and it's you want to have where does that money come from see and, and that's the thing it's it's uh you would you would have, so a really great example of this is a website called steam it and they're trying to like implement this uh action based where you earn money based on actions and if you 
So if you drop off your child and say, oh, there's an alternative where I can make maybe half that amount of equivalency. Okay, but that doesn't exist. Like there's no program in, in, in place aside from mother's allowance and child tax credits and stuff like that. Like if you're a... Like if you went to university and you got a STEM degree as a woman and you're making a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year in some STEM field and you've got your kid, you know, at 39, you know, you pop out your first credit at 39 because you delayed it all to chase a career sort of thing. The government's not going to pay you more than hundred fifty thousand dollars that you're making working your STEM career to stay home and raise that child. They would rather say, go work your STEM career, you know, pay your taxes, put your put your child in our childcare system. Yes. We'll take care of your kid. Just trust us because we're the government and we're good and we know it's right. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put them through our public school systems and then we're going to indoctrinate them with all this stuff that's yeah. going to convince them to I, vote for more big government. Question. See, government keeps, mm -hmm. keeps the population in this never-ending cycle of building itself up bigger and bigger I, and bigger I mean, and fatter and I slower. And the, the thing against that is that what does technology do? Technology squeezes out the middleman. It turns the horse and buggy. Right, but I mean, car. you're still you're still relying on the fact that human beings are smart enough to see the opportunity in that technology and the upside. People people don't vote for freedom. They don't want that technology. They want free shit. It, mm -hmm. it, it's 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 always going to come back to this exhibit over here. It's what are they doing? Like, what is a population doing? And that's what they're doing. You see what I'm saying? Well, it, it only comes up. Until I mean, it's, hey, Beatty, right? listen, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's a great idea. It's a grand plan. And I really hope that at some point the, a large part of the population wakes up and says, F this, mm -hmm. I'm going to take advantage of this de and decentralized platform. That, that day may come. It could be 10 years, it could be 50 years. You know, the entire monetary system could collapse and they're forced to go to it. Maybe the government's forced well, to move to it as well. It's not dependent on it collapsing. The idea here is like just like the horse and buggy to the car, the value has to be so equivalent to that where it's just like, as you say, frying head to the to the forehead, frying head to the forehead, to the forehead yeah. where it's just like, oh, I would much rather live this type of way if the technology was there to support it, like uh, vehicles at an affordable price. Now it mm -hmm. just that has to be that. Now it's, it's asking a lot, but it seems like it could be the technology's there. That's all. I'm okay. Saying. I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to wrap up on a few of these super chats and end the show. Thanks, brother. All right. Um, whew, I got a lot of... Oh, what the hell is going on here on my screen? I got this one here from DB that popped up a thousand times. What happened? All right. I'm going to... I'm going to read these. There's something wrong with my stream yard. It's putting the same one up over and over again. Uh, do you still recommend Nomad Capitalists after doing the plane win interview with Andrew Henderson? If not, who do you recommend? Um... I like the conversation I had with David Lesperance. Um, you can go back to my Playing to Win series. You'll see that conversation there. Uh, I don't remember what the title was. Something like former lawyer um, dealing with uh, tax management issues. He basically does the same thing uh, that Andrew does. And um, he does it from more from a less marketing based perspective, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, Nomad Capitalist is a brand. Dave Lesperance is a former lawyer that deals with high net worth individuals. So take the two and you know, you're going to take the information out of both of them and see what's the most used for you. Uh, and I can't get the thing off the damn screen because there's something wrong with my stream yard. Let's try this over here. Okay. There we go. Uh, Death by China is another documentary I recommend. It's on Amazon Prime. Thanks, man. I'll, I'll check that out too. And I th think a real cut up. Uh, chances Newsroom gets recalled next week. No idea. I don't live in California. Nothing is so permanent as a temporary government program. Milton Friedman. PPC is our only help. Mad Max. Hey, listen. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the tell you this, guys. Um, before you go and waste a vote for Mad Max. <clears throat> go to Wikipedia and check and see who is um, what what parties lead in your riding. Okay. Um, and if you find that the PPC candidate has very little exposure, voting for them is going to be throwing away a vote. Basically, the strategy that smarter voters are using is basically anything but Trudeau, uh, which is not going to be a significant improvement if you get something like Jagmeet Singh 
or Aaron O'Toole. Um, they're not significantly better. So, you know, you can use whatever strategy you think is, is going to work. But, um, you know, uh, again, miracle happens. Maybe he gets enough seats. We'll see to have some sort of influence, even in a minority side. The West will be uh, revived once traditional gender roles are the overwhelming majority, but that will be a natural and chaotic process. There's going to have to be some chaos uh, for that to become an opportunity. Um, it's creating awareness like vids like this. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to have these conversations. Like I'm trying to hit it from both angles and I, I genuinely am interested in hearing guys come on that have a solution to resolving this problem. Um, I wish more guys would show up so that we could cross that bridge, but I'm not hearing genuine solutions to the problem. I'm hearing a lot of hope, and hope is not the same thing. Um, it's more cultural than schooling issue. Hollywood fe feeds boys with romantic BS. Went to college, 17 boys and girls. Yeah, listen, it's not it's not just Hollywood. It's everywhere. I mean, like even in those um, Miller Lite masculinity groups, you know, that we were talking about earlier, <clears throat> you know, those groups with 100,000 members on social platforms and, you know, they're talking about saving the world and masculinity and all that sort of stuff, but they'll come in there and they'll ask questions like, hey, guys, I've been married for, you know, eight years. We got two kids. My wife's not being intimate with me. You know, I'm doing the dishes. I'm mopping the floors and making the beds and doing the laundry. And, you know, what else can I do? And then a couple of like, you know, the normies chime in and like, well, what's your love language, bro? Or, or like, maybe you should just try harder and like, you know, buy her flowers sort of thing, bro. And it's like, somebody needs to give the guy my book. Where's, you know, where's the damn book? It's over here under my stack of papers. Read this. Start there. Unplug is what it what it begins with. John says, hey, Rich, are you thinking about creating a cryptocurrency yourself with somebody like George Gammon so we can all subscribe to a better financial system? There's no need for more cryptocurrencies, guys. Uh, I like George Gammon. I've had people say, create your own crypto. Why? Why? There's like 9,875 of them. Why do we need like, like 9,780? Like What's the point? There's already plenty of very effective ones out there. Bitcoin's great as a store of value. It's it's fantastic. It, it, it is superior to gold in all measures possible. But I still hold gold, right? Because I'm not an idiot. There's no need for all of these cryptocurrencies. There's far too many. And that's part of the reason why I, why I keep telling you guys to take Charlie and Miguel's course, which again closes Tuesday at midnight, is it separates the wheat from the chaff. If you if you want to get into the cryptocurrency market and you fully understand it, you won't ask questions like, hey, create your own cryptocurrency to solve the problem. I'm not going to solve a problem like the monetary system by putting out a cryptocurrency on you know to a YouTube audience. That's not going to solve anything whatsoever. Uh, if you want to learn how to profit and use a blockchain properly, sign up for Charlie and Miguel's course. If you're on my email list, I sent an email this morning. Uh, the video is the playing to win from Friday. There's a link in there. Get in the damn course. They will tell you exactly which ones that you want to use and which ones you want to stay away from, how everything works, and why. Is it worth it to you to move to the United States for two or three years to work in a big tech company for two times higher pay than the EU? Would you risk it at 25? I'll be honest with you guys. The US is going downhill just a little bit slower rate than what Canada is. Canada is well ahead of the U.S. at this stage. <clears throat> I'm going to give you the advice that women give other, other women. You do what's right for you, bro. Okay? How about that? I don't have a crystal ball. I can't really tell you what's going to happen in the next <clears throat> few years in the U.S. with tech companies and stuff like that. Mr. Ferrer, okay, it's time to realize we're not equal. Votes for the ones that got free stuff from the government should count as one quarter of a vote. There was a reason why you had to own property, cast votes in the past, because you had skin in the game, right? It, it all started to change, um, not in the last few decades, but a long, long time ago. Um, just, you know, like it is what it is, man. Ruled by oligarchs, it's inevitable with all democracies rich. Worth reading a book called Political Parties by an author named Robert Michaels. 
<clears throat> okay, I think we have them all. Read your book twice. It's really good. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Um, I got to start to wind up now. I'm coming up on two hours and I got to hop on a private call. Uh, do we have any other solutions here in the private? Don't see one. Okay. All right. Uh, real quick on the wrap up, guys. So last week we launched the uh, supplement line. Production issues are a little bit slow on some of the items. We predicted that um, because it's a fulfillment center, right? So if you guys saw the plane to win last week, I know there's a lot of orders that have come through and people have been like, hey, I got you know these items, but that hasn't arrived yet. Well, we kind of predicted that there was going to be people ordering that, but more people are ordered this. So, okay, surprise, we have to adapt and pivot. So just be patient. Um, the shipments will be a little bit slow from now. You might get some of your shipments fulfilled and the others come, you know, a week later because of production issues. They are all going out. It's only available in the U.S. right now. So please don't message me. Hey, I live in Taiwan. Can I order this stuff? No. Um, I'll talk more about it in the coming weeks when production's uh, more or less solved. But yeah, you can check it out. It's the unpl unpluggedalpha.com. And I do have to shout out to the Grondike Soap Company over here to my left. I've uh, been a longtime supporter of the channel. And uh, if you go to coopersoap.com, where is my little thing here? There it is. Uh, if you go to coopersoap.com or just click the pinned comment in the top description, you get 10% off uh, when clicking that. It's pheromone infused, beard oil, natural soaps, and pheromone sticks. So let's wrap up on that note. Uh, it's been a fun show. Despite the... Um, the conversations, I was really hoping to see some more talks around, hey, here's a solution to the problem. It just goes to show you, it's not an easy problem to solve. Um, it's not going to be like, you know, snap a finger and, hey, boom, <laughs> everything's awesome again. We've resolved all of the insanity. Uh, chaos exists. And, and out of chaos exists opportunity. Um, you know, a lot of people have really been complaining about lockdowns and what's been going on in the last, you know, couple of years. And yeah, it sucks. I'm I'm the first one to admit it it sucks. You know, you can't do things that you were able to do three years ago today. They want to put things in your body that you may not necessarily agree with today. It is what it is. But out of this chaos, guys, there is lots of opportunity. It just exists. That's where. That's where the big breaks are made. So learn how to solve problems. A lot of guys are like, oh, how do you become an entrepreneur? And I always have these one-on-one -on -one calls, you know, on a weekly basis with, you know, my private clients that are like, hey, you know, I, I do this for a living and I want to I wanna make $5 million by the time I'm this age sort of thing. How do I solve this problem and make money this way? And I've, I've heard about this and FBA and taking this and that and the other thing. And it's like, the first thing I want you guys to think about when it comes to thinking bigger is... Success will leave clues. Again, in the top pin comment, there's the link to some Amazon book products that I recommend. Um, you can at least start by reading stories of others chasing excellence. Guys like Richard Branson talking about, you know, in his biography, Losing My Virginity, The Everything Store, which is basically on Jeff Bezos' story. A lot of guys call him, you know, a simp or a beta, but there is no question the man is of high value. He's sending rockets into space. Elon Musk sending rockets into space, right? You know, take a look at what these guys are, are doing because there's a ton of information that you can get out of it that gets you thinking. Uh, Ruthless Viking says, get the crypto mindset course and get started on your road. I'm going to drop the link again for crypto mindset because the course does close, so I'm going to spam it. Here we go. Get it, man. Seriously. It's the best money that you're going to spend on yourself right now. Or don't. Sit on the sidelines. You trust the government. Buy U.S. dollars. And, you know, believe on that. What business to focus on? I have many ideas. Ideas aren't don't mean shit, guys. Everybody, <laughs> I remember I <laughs> had this guy a couple months ago. He's like, sends me this big, long email with like a non-disclosure agreement. He's got this big business idea that he wants me to invest in. The first thing I asked him is, what are your receivables and how many customers do you have? Zero and zero. It was an idea. Bullshit. Don't waste my time. Ideas don't mean nothing. Execution is what matters. That being said, let's wrap it up. 
We'll see you guys next Monday for the next Unplugged Alpha, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope you guys have an amazing week. Leave some comments below. Engage each other in some conversations. And hey, listen, if there's anybody watching this, it's like, I think I have a solution. You have a platform and you want to talk to me about a solution that you want to you know, converse about. Again, I'm the mental point of origin guy here. I'm, I'm basically saying, hey, look, you know, I've collected the data points. I don't see much of <laughs> any opportunity to solve this right now aside from making yourself your own mental point of origin, put in that first. I'm happy to have a conversation with one of you guys. Sure, let's do it. Let's chop it up. See you guys later. Peace.